evening, everyone. Please be seated. Hello and welcome, everyone. I'm Jim Dean, President of the University of New Hampshire. It is my privilege to welcome you to this exciting and momentous day and to say the words that you've worked so hard to hear. Congratulations, graduates. This incredible community makes possible so many stories of growth. Today, let's celebrate your story and that of the classmates sitting next to you and the person next to them. Well, today, we'll thank our supporters and the proud families that are here today, many of them Wildcats themselves. What it means to be a community isn't just what we have in common, it's what we share. And today, we share in one another's successes. May 2023 will forever go down in your history books is a kind of before and after, a dividing line between student and graduate, between preparing and becoming. Already, there's momentum at your feet and the tug of a new direction. Already, you're anticipating future opportunities. Already, you're on the cusp of discovering the next version of you. So what are we waiting for? Let's begin. I'd like to ask everyone now to please rise as Jana El Sayed, a member of the Granite State College Class of 2019, and Emma Grenewal, a member of the UNH Manchester Class of 2023, lead us in our national anthem. Thank you so much. Please, yes, please be seated. Well done. University of New Hampshire at Manchester and Granite State College graduates and families, congratulations and welcome to this year's commencement ceremony. We're gathered here today in celebration of your accomplishments, both as individuals and collectively as the class of 2023 from two great USNH institutions. As what it means to be a leading public research university expands and evolves, there is no one way to be a USNH student today, and no one way to arrive at this moment of achievement and transformation. Whether your educational journey involved countless hours in the lab or quiet hours online after the kids went to bed, you did not get here alone. It took the support of loved ones and the catalyst of this empowering environment, the peers and professors, who are partners in your learning, and the many champions who surround you today. Every step of the way, you were surrounded by people who asserted the value of your dreams and the importance of never giving up. And as a result, you did amazing things throughout your academic careers. You mapped the genetic pathways of disease and helped bring biotech breakthroughs to scale. You became skilled American Sign Language interpreters and capable future educators. You gain new capacity to protect the nation 
as stewards of Homeland Security. You shared your story, pursued your business idea, and invigorated our state's innovation economy, and that just scratches the surface. Everywhere you look across this state and beyond, you can see the impact of your hard work and your collaboration. That's the power of a public research university and a strong university system. Not just the generational discoveries or loudest successes, but this environment of daily possibility where you share in each other's educational journeys from the classroom to the research lab, at the kitchen table or the incubator space, and realize your unique ambitions with opportunities for all of you. All the many pieces that make up your big picture, family, work, passions, life. UNH Manchester and Greenwich State College graduates are known for their resilience, preparedness, and creativity. And perhaps something even more essential, your willingness to roll up your sleeves. To a person, your lived experiences are integral to your passion and purpose. The obstacles you've overcome are a source of inspiration for you and for all of us. When the global pandemic changed the world as we knew it, you worked in our campus testing labs and created safe ways to connect and have fun. Facing the immense challenges of the world, you gained the skills and knowledge to make a difference in your corner of it. Indeed, earning a college degree is an act of pragmatic optimism and one that is never just about us. It's about building a rewarding career and establishing a brighter future for your family, about solving problems right here at home and across the globe, about believing the current edges of our expertise are only the beginning. Today, one thing is sure, the world will of course keep changing. We can't predict tomorrow's roadblocks or its breakthroughs. And that's why applied learning defines a USNH education. Our students graduate with more than just a major or a credential. They leave with a powerful mindset forged through real world experiences that challenge and change them. The knowledge that they are capable of more than they know. So graduates, as you embark on this next chapter of growth, I hope that you continue to advance your point of view and lean into the strength of this USNH network because the world needs you, all of you. Congratulations again to the class of 2023 and thank you all. Before we proceed to the next speaker, I'd like to take a moment to recognize those who have provided the graduates who sit before us today with a world-class education from the University of New Hampshire and Granite State College. Will the members of the UNH Manchester and Granite State College faculty please stand to be recognized and thanked. Deserved. Thank you all. I'd now like to welcome Dean Mike DeSell, Dean of UNH Manchester and Granite State College. Dean DeSell. Thank you, President Dean. And welcome students, families, and friends of Granite State College and UNH Manchester to your 2023 commencement ceremony. As President Dean said, my name is Mike DeSell, and I have the privilege of serving as the Dean of UNH Manchester and for the last two years as Dean of Granite State College. Commencements are always special celebratory events, but this one is a bit more special than usual because it is, it is an event of big firsts and even bigger lasts. Today is the first time that UNH Manchester and Granite State College have held a joint commencement ceremony. It is also the first time that either college has held its commencement ceremony here on the Durham campus. And even though we may be feeling, to paraphrase Mark Twain, like Manchester Yankees in King Arthur's Court. 
I know that we're all grateful for the hospitality of our friends here in Durham. Between last year's unexpected heat wave and needing to use our rain date for the Granite State College ceremony, this indoor venue is a lovely and welcome upgrade. Now for the last. It is a bit hard to imagine, but today is the last time that we will be holding a commencement for Granite State College. Since its founding in 1972, Granite has proudly served for more than 50 years as an institution squarely focused on the needs of adult and non-traditional students seeking to complete a college degree or to seek an advanced degree. It has a well-deserved reputation as the top-ranked online higher education institution in New Hampshire. And you are its final graduates as an independent college. It is also the last time that we will be holding a commencement for UNH Manchester as a college of UNH. With the merger of Granite State College and UNH Manchester, on July 1st, we will become the UNH College of Professional Studies, which will now support more than 3,000 students on both the Manchester campus and our virtual online campus. Just as you graduates are heading off to pursue new and exciting adventures, we as a combined college will be on a new journey as well. We both have interesting times ahead of us, and I'm happy that we can be together today to honor this rich history, to celebrate your accomplishments, and to look forward to a bright future. The graduates gathered here today are indeed a diverse group, and I'd like to just give a shout out to a couple of these groups. First, to the undergraduates from the UNH Manchester campus. You are the group that I know best. UNH Manchester is a small, intimate place where it's hard to go more than a few weeks without running into just about everybody. I continue to be impressed by your commitment to learning in the face of all the demands that you juggle. I especially want to thank those of you who served as peer leaders, tutors, orientation leaders, and members of student government. You found a way to serve and support your fellow Manchester students in addition to your studies and obligations outside of UNH. I'm in awe of how much you all did with so little spare time. You all are a constant source of inspiration to me, and I only had to leave my office and walk the halls to get a reminder of why I love my job. Next, to all of the Granite State College students here today, I have connected personally with only a few of you, but from the feedback I have gotten from the faculty and staff at Granite State, what you have done to be here today at this ceremony is extraordinary. Most of us on this stage had the luxury and the privilege of pursuing our degrees with no significant distractions or breaks in our college journey. Many of you had to overcome both of these challenges and I commend you for your persistence and your dedication. Finally, I'd like to give a shout out to our Manchester campus graduate students. All right, you're getting the hang of this. Some of you here today continued into a graduate program after completing your undergraduate studies at Manchester a demanding path to be sure. Well done, double graduates. An even larger number of our graduate students here today came from places like Hyderabad, Vaisak, Gunter, Mumbai, and Bangalore. You risked much to make the journey to Manchester, and I am grateful for the trust that you placed in us. 
to provide you with a graduate education and to help guide you on your career journey. Your presence as engaged members of our community has truly enhanced everyone's experience. When I first arrived here as Dean, now more than seven years ago, I like to refer to our students as customers. Now, this was not an entirely popular point of view amongst the faculty and staff at Manchester. And even though I still believe in being customer-oriented in our support of students, what I realize now is that it is far better to think about the relationship between the college and its students as a partnership, a partnership where each of us is committed to bring our best every day to the classroom, to the lab, to the career office, to advising appointments, to group chat sessions. For me, higher education is best when it is a two-way street where both educator and students can rely on a mutual commitment to excellence. We provide the knowledge, experience, and framework for learning, and you provide us with a dedication to that learning that helps us further develop as educators. On behalf of the faculty and staff teams at UNH Manchester and Granite State College, thank you for that partnership. It has been an honor to support you all, and I wish each of you great personal and professional success. Thank you. Thank you, Dean DeSalle. At this time, it is my honor to introduce the 2023 commencement speaker. Laura Canoy is one of New Hampshire's most well-known journalists whose career has spanned over 25 years. We'll hear more about Laura's incredible accomplishments shortly. Please join me in welcoming Laura Canoy to the podium. Well, thank you, UNH Manchester and Granite State College for including me in your graduation. It's such an honor to celebrate with you. Thank you also especially to UNH Dean Mike DeSell, who invited me here today. It was an easy yes. <laughs> I love speaking at graduations. It's such a happy time for the graduates, of course, for their proud families, and all the equally proud faculty and staff gathered here today. And now, as your graduation speaker, I'm going to keep you happy by not giving a long speech. <laughs> I also am not going to give you commencement speech cliches like, go out and change the world, although I'm guessing a good many of you in this class will go out and do just that. What I am going to give you in my short remarks is something that I guarantee you will not hear at any other commencement address. Laura's lessons learned from live radio. So, for those of you who don't know me, I worked in live radio my whole career, uh, with the last 25 years as host of New Hampshire Public Radio's The Exchange. It was a live, oh, thank you. <laughs> It was a live daily talk show on news and public affairs with live listener input through calls, emails, comments on social media. Now, many of you graduates may be thinking, well, that's great, but how does this relate to me? I'm not going to walk out of this stadium today and start a live radio show tomorrow. But I think Laura's lessons from live radio apply to every profession, whether journalism or education or business management. So are you ready? Here we go. There's only five. <laughs> Lesson number one is be curious. I think a big part of my professional success was tied to my curiosity about people, about the world, about how the world works or how it is supposed to work. That means allowing yourself to admit you don't know. This applies to any field that I can think of, any type of endeavor that you graduates might choose to undertake. Because once you admit, I don't know, 
you open yourself up to other people, their knowledge, their worldview, their experiences. And speaking as someone who did that every single day for a long, long time, it's endlessly fascinating and enriching. So even though I promised a moment ago I wouldn't exhort you to go out and save the world, I would think that a spirit of curiosity about other people and how other people might think might be a good first step toward softening some of the sharpness in our current political discourse. Lesson number two, move on. Now in live radio, you learn this very early. It's an ugly fact, but you are just not going to be perfect every day. And even worse, when you mess up and you're a radio host, tens of thousands of people hear. Um, once, when I was reading sports scores early in my career, I kept talking about the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, instead of the Sabres, which most of you here know. Um, another time I said that, um, good morning, this is morning edition, I'm Bill Redlin. And that's obviously not my name. Uh, yes, it's embarrassing. But I soon realized, and I really want to say this sincerely to you graduates, it's wasted energy to beat yourself up over what you did wrong. So I learned from those fumbles and mistakes. I'm here now telling you it's the Buffalo Sabres. And I've learned not to obsess over my mistakes. Now, I understand how hard that is. Listeners were never shy telling me about how they thought I messed up or criticizing the way I handled a certain topic. A couple years ago, one listener was so upset about the way I conducted a political debate that she started a Facebook campaign to get people to defund public radio. <laughs> Did I view these criticisms as opportunities to consider how I might do better next time? Sure. Did I view them as an assessment of my value as a human being? No. I just move on and I get ready for the next show tomorrow. Now this applies to any career that you might enter. You might give a boring presentation at work. You might be so frazzled with family demands one day that you tell your boss two plus two equals five. That's okay. You're allowed to make mistakes. Just learn from them and then, like I did every day, you just get ready for the next show tomorrow. Lesson number three, take care of yourself. Now that's hard, I get it. When I was host of the exchange and breaking news happened, I had to throw everything in my life out the window. The show I'd already prepared, my personal plans, my sleep. But when the news wasn't blowing up, I made sure to have time for fun. I was never one of those people who lost vacation days because they didn't find time to use them. I exhort you to not do that. I always made time to get outside and for exercise. We know how important this is. And for our minds, for our bodies, for our spirits. Now, I had two little kids when I was host of the exchange. So those of you with children, I understand. but. America is a workaholic culture, and yet we all instinctively know that our best ideas often come when we're out playing, when we're having fun. So if you hesitate to pull yourself away from your screen or your desk, do it because it'll make you a better worker. It'll make you a better parent. It'll make you a better partner. It'll make you a happier person. You don't have to go hiking up a mountain. You can go outside for a walk for 15 minutes, but just go. Number four, be classy. Use your manners. I know that doesn't really fit our culture right now, does it? Manners and civility and politeness. It's like tea at Buckingham Palace. But I think manners and politeness were my secret sauce that made my radio show so successful. It kept the temperature down in heated discussions. It showed guests and callers that they were in a safe place. Now, please don't misunderstand me. That didn't mean guests could avoid tough questions. That didn't mean that callers could be rude or disrespectful. But whether a guest or a caller, I tried to approach everybody as a, a human being who has just as much right to be here as I do. Lastly, number five, and perhaps my favorite, is 
you don't get if you don't ask. Every single job I have ever had is because I asked. I swallowed my discomfort, I swallowed my pride, and I asked for help. Now, it started with my very first job out of college. I was a receptionist at a typing agency. Now, many of you younger graduates may not know what a typing agency is. That's okay, they don't exist anymore. But before everyone had these things called computers, we had to type documents on these things called typewriters. And some people would do it for themselves, um, but some people would bring it, their documents into a typing agency, like the one I worked for. This was my part-time job in college, which was fine. But when I graduated, I had no other job lined up, so I had to work there full-time, which was miserable. The boss had, let's just call, a temper problem. And that meant she got into a lot of fights with clients. And these fights would end with her screaming, I'll see you in court. And then guess who had to go across town to the DC small claims court to file the paperwork? Me. I was such a regular at the courthouse that the clerks would see me coming to the window and say, you again? After about a month, I, I couldn't stand it. I would have rather had any job but this job. So I gave my notice. One day, one of our regular customers came in to drop off some papers. And he said, see you next week, Laura. I said, actually, you won't, because I'm leaving. And he very kindly said, oh, what are your plans? I said, I have no idea, but I can't stay here anymore. I just graduated with a degree in international economics, um, international affairs with a minor in economics. He said, oh, that's interesting. My good friend, I'll call him Joe, just in case he watches this graduation speech later, um, works at a place called the Institute for International Economics. I'll give him a call. He can tell you how you can get a job in this field. Okay, I thought, great. I met with Joe the next day, and I could tell right off the bat, he was so irritated having to talk to me, wasting his time. He said basically, we have no jobs here. You can try this group, you can try this organization. Uh, did I mention we have no jobs here? Good luck on your search, and we have no jobs here. Okay, message received, no jobs. I got home later that afternoon, and this was before everyone had a cell phone, so when you lived with a roommate, your roommate answered the phone. And my roommate said, oh, some guy named Joe called. He wants you to call him back right away. <laughs> so it turns out as soon as I had left, one of the senior economists said he absolutely could not finish his project unless he had more help. Well, guess whose resume was sitting right on the top of Joe's pile? So yes, that was a stroke of luck, but it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't been bold enough to put myself forward to say to Joe's friend, I, I, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm interested in. Can you help? What ideas do you have? I have dozens of similar stories from my career where I swallowed my nerves, I picked up the phone, and I spoke to people. I advocated for myself. I'm not talking about being pushy or obnoxious, but I am saying, this is what I can do. Do you have any ideas for me? I'd like to close by congratulating you on achieving your degree, which of course is what any graduation speaker would do. But I especially want to congratulate this class. These past three years with a global pandemic have been exhausting and confusing and terrible. And it would have been easy for you all to just give up. But you didn't. You didn't. And with help from your professors, administrators, staff, and families, you stayed on track and you did it. You're here. What a great day. I'm so honored to share it with you. What a great moment. Congratulations, class of 2023. Thank you so much, Laura. We will now proceed with the conferral of the honorary degree 
and presentation of the Granite State Award. Laura Canoy, you are one of New Hampshire's most well-known journalists. During your 25-year career as host of New Hampshire Public Radio's The Exchange, thousands of listens, listeners tuned in to hear your interviews with local and national newsmakers. Your intensive preparation for interviews and the culture of firmness and politeness you created on The Exchange earned you a reputation as a tough but fair journalist. From politics and presidential races to education funding and the opioid crisis, you provided your listeners with in-depth coverage of critical issues. The New Hampshire Association of Broadcasters recognized your talents in 2007 when they named you New Hampshire's Broadcaster of the Year. Though you stepped away from the host chair of the exchange in 2021, you continued to moderate and foster engaging conversations in New Hampshire as the Director of Community Engagement at the Rudman Center at UNH Franklin Pierce School of Law. You are also an advocate for New Hampshire writers and readers as the host of the podcast, Read Local New Hampshire. Laura Canoy, in recognition of your contributions as journalist, moderator, speaker, writer, and active and engaged citizen of New Hampshire, the Unity, University of New Hampshire is proud to confer upon you the degree of Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters. Laura Canoy, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University System of New Hampshire, I bestow upon you the, doc the degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa, with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. And now for the presentation of the Granite State Award. Deo Wano, you are a nationally recognized speaker, storyteller, and social impact innovator. As the CEO, managing principal, and founder of the Deo Wano Consultancy, you have helped businesses, schools, nonprofits, and individuals build authentic relationships maximize their positive impact, and make a difference in their communities. You came to New Hampshire in 2000, when your family fled tragedy and civil war in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Since then, you have shared your family's incredible story of perseverance with countless audiences. By using your gifts as a storyteller, motivational speaker, performing artist, and leader, you have inspired others in New Hampshire and around the world to express themselves discover their self-worth, and pursue their potential. Your career has taken you from classrooms and boardrooms and everywhere in between, with roles at the U.S. State Department, educational institutions, and a number of startups. You were named as an emerging leader in the 40 Under 40 in New Hampshire's 2016 class, and were a graduating member of Leadership New Hampshire's class in 2017. You've been welcomed at Yale University, Dartmouth College's Campuses Services Division, TEDx Amoskogi, the Milliard, and the Ethiopian Community Development Council, as well as many other organizations and events. Deo Wano. We are honored to present you with this year's Granite State Award. Deo Wano. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University System of New Hampshire, I bestow upon you the Granite State Award, an honor reserved for those who have made exceptional contributions to the state of New Hampshire. Congratulations.
Thank you, everyone. Laura and Dale will always be proud members of the class of 2023. I'd now like to welcome back Dean DeSell to introduce our first student speaker. I'm now proud to introduce Paul St. Cyr, a member of the class of 2023, earning a Bachelor of Science in Public Service Management from Granite State College to give the final student address for Granite State College. Good evening, President Dean, Dean DeSell, and our distinguished guests, faculty, and staff. Thank you for allowing me to speak with you on behalf of my fellow graduates on this momentous final commencement as Granite State College. My name is Paul St. Cyr, and I am graduating today with the Bachelor's of Science in Public Administration. Like many of you, my road to receiving this degree was not direct. Like many of you, life happened. Plans changed, and I found myself fulfilling other life's goals along the way at, to this moment. I will say I'm a third generation firefighter and a first generation farmer. This is my third undergraduate degree from a public college in New Hampshire. All of my degrees have been while I worked three jobs. In the past 15 years, I worked two jobs and I currently own a hay business where I'm a hay producer and hay farmer in this seacoast area. When I went, first went to college at UNH, this building wasn't here. It was a field. And it was finally built at the end of my senior year where I saw many concerts and amazing hockey games. Go Wildcats! <laughs> yes. While friends and classmates were in Florida on spring break, I was milking cows up the road or cleaning out stalls or working shifts for the fire departments in the area. I graduated in 1996 with an animal science degree in dairy farm management. Back uh, then there were 200 dairies in New Hampshire back then. Today there are less than half. Uh, it's pretty important for our uh, economy and our tourism and our landscape. Uh, my work with fire departments inspired a new interest in emergency services, so I pursued a degree and health science from NHTI in Concord, where I graduated in 2000. I was still working while going through college, which wasn't advised for the program. At one point, my beat up pickup truck burned up on the side of the road, which left me in dire straits. I was living from place to place and couch surfing at friends' apartments. I had to catch rides to uh, finish my class uh, for the last year. Even borrowing a camper at one point and living off gas station hot dogs. Over the 20 years since, I worked hard to get on my feet, eventually paying off debt, student loans, other debt, buying a home, starting a career as a firefighter and advancing to captain, having a family. My beautiful wife and daughter are here with us today, as well as our parents. Like many of you who reach a certain age and place in your life, I can reflect back and it all seems miraculous it came together. Some of us had been knocked down. We've been discounted. Or maybe we couldn't see in ourselves the potential that others saw in us. But somehow we found ourselves with the right people to support our goals. And we found the joy in the journey found enough belief to ourselves to dig deep when it got hard and the courage to do the next thing. This was the next thing. This was my next thing. After working a while in farming and public safety services, I realized that I needed additional knowledge and skills and the right college credential to climb the ladder to be promoted to become a fire chief was Grant State College. 
Grant State College was the best fit for me and my crazy schedule. I'll shout out to my advisor, academic advisor, Catherine Acker, for her patience, expertise, and kindness, for without her, it would have been much more difficult. So thank you to her. Working two fire departments, thank you. Working two fire departments and farming over 60 acres of hay in the summer months made it challenging to balance classes with work. But I doubled up on classes last year and accomplished my goals. I'll confess to you all that I was planning on graduating last year. Again, life happens, but I'm here today. We're all here today. Despite the chaos of COVID, the twists and turns in our lives, and the many unexpected miracles along the way. So here's some of my top words of advice gained over my lifetime of experience. Look back at your journey with humility and pride. Help those struggling to get back on their feet. Take a vacation to enjoy life. To make, to make friends, be one. Remember where you started. It's okay to have setbacks. It's, not, it's okay not to be okay and seek help. Take every opportunity you can, especially if it's free. Well, maybe not gas station hot dogs. <laughs> Always be a student of your profession. I wanted to add, uh, let's honor our, uh, those who serve in our uh, armed forces past and present, our military, and uh, our, also our first responders who make this country great. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, remember that while the journey to your goals may not be direct, along the way you'll discover that the journey is just as meaningful. I thank you again for your time, and congratulations to the Granite State College Class of 2023. God bless. Thank you, Paul. We'll now continue with the recognition of our Granite State College Associate and Bachelor Degree candidates. Graduates, please follow the instructions of the faculty marshals and stand when they direct you. Matthew Bean. Rhonda Conover. Shania Deshawn.
Isabella De Simone. Megan Dore. Leanne Ferguson. Megan Fournier. Blair Gomez. Paul Michael. Shirley Mower Fenna. Sarah Terrio. Colleen Turcott. Michael Vaughn. Morgan Wagstaff. Solange Abeka. Tim Ahern. Nicole Andrews. Jessica Ardolino Puvio. Heather Aria. Lydia Bollier. Kayla Blanchett. Sarah Bonneville. Jennifer Burke Guptill. Rebecca Bushy. Jonathan Kamari. Luanda Castino Diaz. Kara Chartier. Callum Cochran. Avon Comstock. Julie Cooney. Nicole Cotton. Ashley Cross. Heather Cunningham. Angela Davidson. Katrina Diet. Liza Dion. Bo Donahue. Michaela Donati. Lindsay Duchesne. Crystal Elder. Aspen Dyer. (laughs) 
Yulitsa Estrada. Lori Field. Kimberly Fortin. Brittany Furness. Sarah Gates. Tina Gelinas. Farhud Nietzsche. Close enough. Bethany Gould. Nicole Grady. Greg Granville. Amy Gray. Jasmine Gayette. Carrie Henshi. Frankie Hitchcock. Amanda Howell. Amanda Hughes. Lori Johnson. Michelle Johnson. Suzanne Keys. Stacy King. Vera Kurek. Christina Langley. Brittany LeBlanc Halsey. Darcy Lefebvre. Alexandra Levesque. Alexandra. Angela Little. Morgan Little. Tamika Marcinic. Cheyenne Marshall, Amanda Moss, Godfrey Masuku, Micah McFadden, Brooke McGibbon, Ashley McLaughlin, Allison Melindy, Tawana Myers, D Denise Morin, Elizabeth Nasseter, Finney Nakisa. Cody Nichols, Robert Alquist, Sabrina Lynn Pajot, Fiorda Perez, Nicholas Quintiliani. Donna Rabidou, Kyle Rayum, Heather Robertson, Michelle Rourke, 
Carrie Sawyer. Lynn Sheehan. Gina Smith. Rebecca Sorrell. Paul St. Cyr. Elise Stacy. Allison Sullivan. Jewel Sullivan. Salome Sweeney Storis. Marisha Tessier. Rebecca Tharp. Nicholas Thompson. Caitlin Town. Michael Tuttle. Joseph Vaughn the third. Molly Vesey. Sarah Weldon. And now for the conferral of degrees. Dean DeSalle, will you please present the candidates? Will the faculty, class marshals, and candidates for the Associates, Bachelor of Arts, and Bachelor of Science degrees from Granite State College please rise? President Dean and Provost Jones, it is my pleasure and privilege to present you the associate and bachelor's degree candidates from Granite State College. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University System of New Hampshire, I am honored to confer upon each of you the appropriate associate and bachelor's degree with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Will the class marshals now lead our graduates in moving their tassels from the right to the left side of their mortar boards? Will the faculty and graduates please be seated? Next, we will continue with the recognition of our Granite State College master's degree candidates. Graduates, please follow the instructions of the faculty marshals and stand when they direct you. Amadon, Sandra Baker, Alicia David, Deborah Diggs, Emily DuPont, Felicia Formasano. Evan Hatfield, Bruce Hidden, Caitlin Komisarek, Shelly Lapont, Lapointe, sorry, Thomas Linsky. 
Amanda Mace. Catherine Page. Gabrielle Ronsley. Sarah Roger. Susan Sanborn. Kyle Shaw. Marilyn Shriver. Catherine Toole. And our last Granite State College graduate, Gary Von George. And now for the conferral of degrees. Dean DeSell, will you please present the candidates? Will the faculty, class marshals, and candidates for the master's degree from Granite State College please rise? President Dean and Provost Jones, it is my pleasure and privilege to present to you the master's degree candidates from Granite State College. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University System of New Hampshire, I am honored to confer upon each of you the appropriate master's degree with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Please be seated. Congratulations and thank you, everyone. We now turn to the graduates from UNH Manchester. You actually can sit down, it's okay. They're very excited, and, and I don't blame them. Dean DeSell, will you introduce our next student speaker? Thank you, President Dean. It is with great pride that I introduce our UNH Manchester student speaker today. Alice Bitveris has embraced learning throughout her college career, graduating with honors, the accounting major exemplifies the success that academic rigor and enthusiasm can bring. With a goal to become a certified public accountant, real world experience has been the heart of Alice Bet's college career. She worked full time as a finance associate at Merchants Fleet before landing an internship at public accounting firm Baker Newman Noyes in early 2022. Her work ethic and passion did not go unnoticed. Her internship transitioned into a full-time role on the tax staff within three months. In addition to her current job, Alice Bett is also a budding entrepreneur. For her senior project, she created a comprehensive business plan for a convenience store, a dream she is working toward bringing to life for her and her family to run. With her intellect, compassion, and dedication, Alice Bett will no doubt have a positive impact on any business and community she's part of. Please join me in welcoming Alice Bett Veris to the podium. Thank you, President Dean, and thank you to the students, teachers, parents, and staff who made these four years everything that they were. So a big applause for all of you. When I was told I was going to be the speaker this year, the first question that came up to my mind was, what do you want to be when you grow up? Because this is a question we are always asked when we are little, and we answer things like astronaut, 
fashion designer, firefighter, doctor, Barbie, probably kids today are going to say TikToker. I personally wanted to be a nun. Yes, a nun like Mother Teresa. This was because I was born and raised within Catholicism and I went to a Catholic school. But that dream didn't move forward because my mom told me that I had to shave my head to be a nun. <laughs> then I ran into my second passion, numbers. Since I was a kid, I have been a high achiever. So much that when I was 10, I promised to myself that by the age of 21, I was going to have my master's degree. And that dream was almost becoming a reality until I found myself walking into the U.S. Embassy in the Dominican Republic with my dad and my brother to get an immigrant visa. I almost had my bachelor's, but I had to leave my career unfinished with only one class left to come to the U.S. to find a better future. I had to leave everything behind to start from scratch, to come to a different country with different culture, laws, and language. And let me tell you that the process is not pleasant at all. During my first years in the US, I was feeling frustrated because the American dream is not too much of an American dream when you are an immigrant. And stepping back is not always something that we want to do. So, when I came to UNH, I learned that sometimes we have to step back to come forward with more strength and wisdom. I learned that like an arrow, you have to be pushed back to come forward and reach your target. So, why am I telling you a brief overview of my story instead of making anecdotes about like how much we loved spending hours repeating the smart book questions for Professor Gerard's accounting classes? Or the extensive case studies along with Professor Troy's constructive feedback during senior seminar? Because with my story, I want to help you reflect about two things. First, that today we're not only getting a piece of paper, we are also getting opportunities to grow, we are getting knowledge and skills to help others be a better version of themselves, and we are also getting opportunities for our loved ones. Second, I want to remind you that things don't always go as planned. And even if it is our own decision, God, destiny, or the universe, changing plans or path can turn into something amazing if we learn from it. And even when things don't go as planned, there's always our silver lining. If you ask the Alice Bed of five years ago if this was the life that she was expecting before coming to the US, I will say definitely no, because it is even better. Now I have friends, consoles, and opportunities I wouldn't probably have if I had stayed in the Dominican. My favorite book, the Bible, says in Ecclesiastes 3.1 that to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And God has shown me that this is the right time for me and this is the right time for all of you. Today, I am becoming the first person in my Hispanic family to have a bachelor's degree. And I have... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And now, I have become a role model for my two siblings to go to college. And this wouldn't have been possible without the help of God, the archer of this arrow, and my lovely family. And these things will actually go in Spanish because they don't speak English. So if they could please stand. Por favor, mi familia se puede parar. Gracias. Gracias, porque sin ustedes esto no hubiese sido posible. Y esto también es de ustedes. Los amo mucho. Thank you. <laughs> I won't translate that. I also want to give a special thanks to Professor Jean Gerard, Professor Bill Troy, and Professor Marisa Forti for all your support and counseling during my journey at UNH. For the future, I see myself becoming a certified public accountant and helping my family run their own business, a project that wouldn't be possible without the help of my counsels during my senior final project. To finish, class of 2023, I want to leave you your last homework, and it's to answer the following question. How do you see your future, and what are you going to do to accomplish it? Thank you, and congratulations, UNH Manchester.
Thank you so much. That was beautiful. We'll now continue with the recognition of our UNH Manchester bachelor's degree candidates. Graduates, will you please follow the instructions of the faculty marshals and stand when they direct you. Rachel Bidwell. Angela Labrun. Emma Grenwall. Manar Ahmed Altagridi. Ian Alton. Rachel Anastasia. Brittany Andrews. Cameron Audette. Grace Beechwell. Emily Baker. Autumn Bedell. Aaron Blaze. Michaela Boldick. Grant Bonzer. Ellie Brown. Lee Brown. William Brunette. Taylor Berwin. Tanat Puan. Hattie Kadrick. Alinette Chavez. <laughs> Nolan Davis. <laughs> Elvis Demerovic. <laughs> William De Silva. Casey DeSort. Raina DeClose. Ethan Edwards. Emily Ermintrot. Jessica Elkins. David Engelson. Barbara Ferreras. Trevor Flaherty. Noah Forrest. Noah Forrest. N. Haley Foster. Angela Fuentes. Silarico. Haley Gerace. Rachel Gilman. Rachel Gilman. Leonard Gratton. Leonard Gratton. Naomi Gutierrez. Noemi Gutierrez. 
Taylor Harper. Lauren Wren Hastings. Oh, Amanda. Amanda Hebert. Dylan Haas. Dylan Haas. Catherine Heavey. Ethan Huntley. Ethan Huntley. Cole Holtzman. Who's there? Milton? Bailey Douglas Mujason. John Joyce. Simona Canan. Sarah Katsohiz. Cassidy Kearns. Phoebe Kelly. Nadia Kiyokumin. Madison King. Oh my gosh. Joshua, Joshua Korsak. Caitlin Legier. Savannah Lopez. Savannah Lopez. Michael Magliosi. Michael Maltes. Candace Martin. Stephanie Ann Mastrio. Kelly Mathewson. Carissa McDonald. Madison Quinn McLaughlin. Michael McMahon. Kelly Merrifield. Samuel Miller. Michaela Manassian. Pamela Moser. Junior Nimbobe. Ashley Nelson. Annalise Nett. Kaluba Nagala. Jonathan Nguyen. Hunter Norman. Alice Bet Barreras. Carlos Nunez Jr. Jordan Odell. Jules Panagitan. Deepak Patil. Fernando Perez. 
Joseph Planchette. Joseph Prescott. Christopher Puzo. Juan Reyes. Loris Reyes Pineda. David Reynolds. Brianna Riza. Derek Santiago. Christopher Saunders. Abir Shabaka. Fardeen Sedeke. Kira Smith. Logan Starkey. Manak Sakar. Shoshana Trudell. <laughs> Vanessa Tao Tu. <laughs> Ali Twitchell. <laughs> Caleb Van Gilder. Caleb Van Gilder. Thomas Walker. Lingard Whiteford V. Matthew Woodworth. Kilana Zabata. Cole Zimmerman. Muhammad Sukar. And now for the conferral of degrees. Dean Dissell, will you please present the candidates? Will the faculty, class marshals, and candidates for the Bachelor of Arts Bachelor of Science degrees from UNH Manchester, please rise. President Dean and Provost Jones, it is my pleasure and privilege to present to you the bachelor's degree candidates from UNH Manchester. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University System of New Hampshire, I am honored to confer upon each of you the appropriate bachelor's degree with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Will the class marshals now lead our graduates in moving their tassels from the right to the left side of their mortar boards? Will the faculty and graduates please be seated. Next, we will continue with the recognition of our UNH Manchester master's degree candidates. Graduates, please follow the instructions of the faculty marshals and stand when they direct you.
Minakshi Kithasan. Konya Kartabak. Brett Bennett. Trey Carl. Julia Castimore. Sharmila Chula Gunla. Narsima Chintakunta. Thomas Gurton. Anil Krishna Godisu. Teja Widna Guni. Darwin Kiev. Ari Grad. Isabel Lazier. Lauren Moulton. Shashank Munda. Sai Kiran Reddy. Sneha Namati. Krishna Shaitanya Bhritti. Sonal Ratilud. Kevin Raymond. Nela Sapienza. Uh, Sinisha Srinivasun. Jonathan Taylor. Ude Manish Reddy Tuma. Hafa Kotrim Tan. Ulas Upalanche. Rohit Kumar Virabuma. Uh, CJ Virugundi. Gina Yakon. William Rivera. Swati Vela Chiti. And now for the conferral of degrees. Dean Moorhead, will you please present the candidate? My name is Carrie Moorhead, and I am the Dean of the University of New Hampshire's Graduate School. Will the faculty, class, class marshals, and candidates for the master's degrees from the University of New Hampshire at Manchester please rise? President Dean and Provost Jones, it is my pleasure and privilege to present to you the master's degree candidates from the University of New Hampshire at Manchester. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University System of New Hampshire, I am honored to confer upon each of you the appropriate master's degree with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Congratulations. Will the faculty and graduates please be seated? I encourage you all to remember, share, and honor the story of your time at UNH and at Granite State College. You will forever be a proud part of the UNH and Granite State College families. Thank you for giving us so much to celebrate today, and thank you, everyone. At this time, as we close the ceremony, we ask that you remain in your seats while the platform party recesses and then follow the instructions of the faculty marshals. Finally, congratulations once again to each of you, the class of 2023.